Now, obviously, um, uh, this kind of analysis leaves out a lot of grey areas, uh, mm. so apologies in advance. What I'll do with the top area here is, uh, this is uh, abstraction. And down here is configuration. Okay, now I've still got this um, division here and what I'm going to do over here is call this area cool and this area hot. Now cool meaning you know with some with some kind of uh, conceptual distance from the the actual mm. performative mm. Um, act and the actual material itself. The the most obvious example of cool abstraction if you like is hard edge. Um, We might even call it pure, pure abstraction. Mm. And a hot, a hot um, response to that would be lyrical abstraction. Um, and we might look at somebody um, here, like Robert Jacks. This is an earlier progenitor of the sort of you know, yeah. The genre. Yeah, the and market. there are several. I've yeah. got a few listed here, but just mm. to sort of uh, put it into context. Mm. Mm. And over here, um, uh, I just thought perhaps Alan Mittelman is a good example of a more lyrical. Um, now, I'd also argue there's a kind of hybridised abstraction. I'll put that down here near the equator. Um, and I've put Robert Rooney as a kind of ancestor there. Mm. Um, Why Robert Rooney? What like he's definitely cool. Yep. And it's it's I see it's sort of crossover between abstraction and figuration. So he's using photo. Um, I, I suppose I'm talking about something that employs the uh, the visual machinery of uh, cool abstraction, mm. but brings um, representational elements into it. Mm. It's kind of heading towards pop in a way. And yeah. Dale Hickey would be another person. Yes. Uh, who who sits under here? That I'd have like text based art. Um, we might look at somebody like Paul Parthos as a, an ancestor there. I'll, I'll, I'll sort of come back with more names okay, yeah. in a minute. Mm -hmm. Now, just to complicate yep. things, th this could probably wander over into the, um, the hot yeah. area as well. And we could look at someone like Jenny Watson, who you'd never call a, um, an abstract artist, but she's text-based. So put a question mark there. Mm. Um, I mean, you know, obviously all this is open mm. to um, discussion. I'll sort of come back to that, but if we go down to the, the figuration area, we'll say in the, in the cool hemisphere, mm. um, the obvious one, if you like, is hyper-realism. Uh, look, there's probably you could invite um, um, 10 artists into the room and they'd all disagree with 90% of this, but, yeah. it, but it just sort of breaks it up a little bit. My ancestor here is William Delafield Cook. So most of, you know, these people I'm referring to as ancestors uh, were basically riding high in the 70s when I mm. um, first went to art school. I've also put appropriation down here. This is still on the cool side, but it's um, heading towards figuration. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it could probably wander over over there a bit, but it's it's conceptually cool, and, you know, it has that mm. sort of slight remove. And then so it... Pop orange. Yeah, and pop, would, you know, would come in as well. In some respects, appropriation ends up being a bit of a new a newbie. Um, uh, no, it does indeed. Yeah, um, it's funk. Mike Brown as a an ancestor there. Then narrative expressionism. Um, obviously, figuration goes hand in glove with narrative. So there you get, I mean, almost Jenny Watson could be brought yeah, into she that could. again. She could, um, for sure. I've put her up here purely because of her um, use of text. Now, the, to me, the obvious ancestor here is Peter Booth. Mm. Um, even though he obviously began um, 
over here. It's impossible to get this completely sorted because yeah. um, somebody like David Thomas, for example, like mm. the, his current work, mm. um, would sit very comfortably next to the early abstractions of Peter Booth, um, in my mm. opinion. You know. mm. Um, mm. But Peter Booth here is wearing the... Uh, Wearing the baseball Crown. cap of the, yes. uh, the figurative expressionist. Mm. All right. Gareth Sansom is another person who uh, I'd put under this yep. banner. With a certain amount of funk involved. I yep. Um, narrative representation. Mm. Okay, now this is the straight shooters, the school of Edward Hopper, if you like. Uh, um, okay. So Rick and Moore is my Classic. ancestor here. Yeah. Can't leave out landscape. And we've got someone like John Wolseley. I think I can spell Fred his Williams name. Williams would probably be... Where do you... Well, um, Fred Williams, mm, I think you'd have to put him under line, landscape, right? but he could mm. almost go under hybrid abstraction as well. Mm. Bearing in mind that mm. that early 70s period, um, there was a lot of um, that kind of... Um, uh, philosophy, if you like. So even someone like mm. Fred Williams could be sitting alongside Robert Rooney yeah. if you looked at it from that point of view. The most populous area mm. in my in my mm. map actually sits um, in this section here, and I've called it um, synthetic narratives. And this is um, this is, if you like, um, the response of Melbourne painters to. To postmodernism, I guess. It's the easiest way to put it. Okay. So, who's uh, your progenitor? Um, look, I really struggled to find somebody here. I'm, I think most of the people that belong in this in this category are more recent. I don't think there was mm. much going on that would perhaps fit this banner. And of course, the other thing is there, were, there was probably more activity in Sydney on this front. Mm. I'd, I'd suggest someone like um, Tim Johnson. Uh, okay. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Martin Sharp. You know, there's a lot of people here that uh. would be obviously ancestors or whatever, but this, we're, stri yeah. we're sticking it to Melbourne. Yep. So is painting dead? Uh, I always say, uh, yes, and I believe the guitar is not very well either. Um, yeah. So in other words, people are going to be playing guitars for the next you know, four million years, and I would maintain mm. that there's always going to be people painting.